हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली सो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल स्टेलर स्पेक्ट्रा एंड स्टेलर क्लासिफिकेशन फर्स्ट फ्रॉम द पेपर एस्ट्रोनॉमी एंड एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स सो स्टूडेंट्स let us see what we are going to learn in this module first we will learn that spectra can be continuous emission or absorption the last one is caused when a cool gas absorbs the photons from the continuous spectrum second understand that the stellar spectra are absorption spectra very simple stellar spectra contains very few lines while the complex ones contains thousands of lines and molecular bands next we will understand that based on common features in the stellar spectra spectral classification has been developed and there are seven major classes that is o b a f g k m lastly we will also learn that each subclass is subdivided into 10 subclasses thus a not is followed by a1 and a9 is followed by f0 then we will also study or understand that the stars belonging to the first three major classes they are called as early type and those belonging to the last four are known as late type stars so let us start with a basic introduction about the module in the last few modules we have dealt with the stellar characteristics like apparent magnitudes absolute magnitudes and their relationships with the luminosities of stars since stars they are not monochromatic radiators so ubv system of photometry became a necessity this brought in the concept of color index of stars and its relation to their surface temperatures we found how useful the color color diagram is for distinguishing between various groups of celestial objects it became clear that the true luminosity of a star can be found only by universal detectors of radiations like bolometers however these detectors are rather inefficient and are not very useful so the concept of bolometric correction was introduced expression for bolometric correction was derived assuming that stars radiates like black bodies since this assumption is not correct parametric formula for bolometric correction have been introduced having dealt with these basic concepts we are now ready to embark on important concepts like the stellar classifications we will find that the existence of certain absorption lines and their intensities play a pivotal role in defining the spectral class of a star it is important to bear in mind that once 
the spectral class of a star has been fixed. It gives us significant information about many characteristics of the star. Spectroscope an important method of studying the stars is through the electromagnetic radiation that we receive from them. So an analysis of the spectra of stars can provide information not only about the layer from which the radiation is emanating but also about the internal constitution of stars their atmospheric structure and their geometric properties such as whether they belong to spectroscopic binary groups. So most of the theories of stellar structure they are checked by comparing the predicted spectra against the observed spectra. It is because of the stellar spectra as a tool for the study of stars that spectroscopy is sometimes said to be the mother of astrophysics. A basic spectroscope, let us remember, consists of a prism or a diffraction grating which splits the light into various colors which is shown in this figure. So a spectroscope in this consists of a detector. The detector could be a photographic plate. Now these days the detector is a CCD charged couple devices. Emission and absorption of photons. In the simple Bohr model a photon is emitted when an electron jumps from a higher energy to a lower energy level. So the photon which is emitted has the energy equal to the difference in the energies of the two levels which are involved in the transition as shown in this figure. So if the electron can absorb a photon of energy exactly equal to the difference in the two energy levels, then the electron jumps from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. Now here consider a large assembly of the atoms. So in this case the energy levels they will coincide. Now the atoms can absorb a photon of precisely this energy for an orbital electron to go from the lower energy state to the higher energy state. Now here the emitted photon shows up the emission spectrum and the absorbed photons shows us the absorption spectrum which are clearly depicted in this figure. The lines in the emission and the absorption spectra of an element have lines of exactly the same frequency as shown in this figure. This figure shows the hydrogen spectrum which has many such characteristic lines corresponding to the various transitions in the hydrogen atoms. So the emission spectra of other elements they are characteristic of transitions in their atoms. Continuous and absorption spectra. A hot solid object or a hot gas at high pressure emits a continuous spectrum as shown in this figure. So the individual lines 
they are broadened due to collisions and overlap so much that the spectrum appears continuous. Now, if a cool gas is located between the hot object and the spectroscope, its atoms absorbs from the continuum photons of characteristic frequencies. So, these absorbed photons, they are show up as the dark lines on the continuous background as shown in this figure. This is an absorption spectrum. Stellar spectra are generally absorption spectra. Now continuing our discussion over continuous emission and absorption spectra. Now in this figure, the top picture shows the continuous spectrum. The middle picture is the emission spectrum of hydrogen, Balmer series. And the bottom picture shows the absorption spectrum of the hydrogen against a bright continuum. And the frequency of lines in the emission and absorption spectra, they are exactly equal. Solar spectrum. Now students, we are quite familiar with the structure of the sun, which we can study it in great detail because of its proximity. So the solar spectrum consists of a continuous background crossed by a large number of dark lines. So the existence of dark lines was explained correctly by Fraunhofer. These lines are therefore called as Fraunhofer lines as shown in this figure. So the continuous spectrum is produced in the photosphere called as the sphere of light for this reason of the sun. So photosphere is the visible surface of the sun. Above the photosphere, there are two layers of the solar atmosphere, the chromosphere and the corona. The thickness of the photosphere is around 500 kilometers. So the temperature at the base of the photosphere is around 6000 Kelvin. The temperature decreases outwards and reaches a minimum of around 4500 Kelvin at the top. So the cooler the layers are the source of dark absorption lines reflecting their chemical composition. Now, as you can see from this figure, that the prominent pair of sodium lines, designated as D lines of wavelengths 589 and 589.6 nanometers. The signature of the spectral class, that is G, sun is G2, are the H and the K lines of ionized calcium and the wavelength is around 396.8 nanometers. So let us now discuss the stellar spectra. Stellar spectra is similar to the solar spectrum in that there are dark lines and bands overlying the continuous background. So the important lines seen in the stellar spectra are those H first, helium first, helium two, 
ऑक्सीजन फर्स्ट सेकेंड थर्ड नाइट्रोजन सेकेंड थर्ड कार्बन सेकेंड थर्ड फोर्थ सिलिकन फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल नॉमन क्लेचर फर्स्ट डिनोट्स द न्यूट्रल एटम सेकेंड डिनोट्स द सिंगली आयनाइज एटम थर्ड डिनोट्स द डबली आयनाइज एटम्स एंड सो अमंग्स द मेटल्स द मोर सिग्निफिकेंट लाइन्स आर दोज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड by calcium first and second magnesium first and second iron first titanium first chromium first nickel first and scandium first so the prominent dark bands found in the stellar spectra have been traced to molecules and radicals such as titanium oxide zirconium oxide lanthanum oxide carbon ch cn mgh silicon hydride aluminum hydride sco vanadium oxide chromium oxide c3 and si c2 in addition to dark lines and bands spectra of some stars also shows the emission features so stellar spectra display great diversity in the number and intensity of lines and bands and in the intensity of background continuum so this figure shows a sequence of spectra at the top we see a spectrum with just a few lines at the bottom we see a spectrum with thousands of absorption lines so in this diagram we can also notice the change in the brightness of background continuum so students despite the great diversity in stellar spectra common features in them can be noticed based on the features which are common in some spectra are and those features which distinguish one type of spectra from the other type astronomers have devised a classification scheme for stars so classifications has led to a knowledge of conditions in the atmosphere of stars including temperature chemical composition and strength of gravity so no wonder the assignment of spectral class to a star is very very important spectral classes of stars at first when the spectra of a large number of stars were collected it was thought that the differences in spectra reflected the varying chemical compositions of the stellar atmospheres it was argued that the gradual change in the spectral features reflected the gradual build up of chemical elements from hydrogen so the system of classification of stars is known as harvard system because it was developed at the harvard observatory mainly due to the work of annie cannon following the work of henry draper so the harvard system divides the stars on the basis of their spectra into seven major classes namely o b a f g k m depending upon the temperature range as shown in this figure so the sequence of jumbled letters may appear strange initially the alphabets that is in the alphabetical order from a to q 22 classes running 
from the simplest to the most complex spectra. This scheme was too unwieldy. So Cannon was able to rearrange and merge the classes to only seven major classes. It is remarkable that this scheme has survived till today. However, with continuous improvement in our understanding of stellar composition and stellar evolution, some adjustments became necessary. So an interesting and popular mnemonic to remember the sequence is OBA, fine girl guy, kiss me. So each major class is further subdivided into 10 subclasses denoted by the numbers from 0 to 9. Thus the class O runs from O0 to O9 followed by B0. B9 is followed by A0 and so on. So occasionally even a subclass may be further subdivided. Stars belonging to the first three major classes are sometimes referred as early type, while those belonging to the last four major classes are called as the late type stars. Almost 99% of all the stars belongs to the classes A, B, F, G, K and M. So at the other extreme, the M stars, they have a large number of lines and molecular bands. Whereas the surface temperature of the sun is 5770 Kelvin belonging to the spectral class G2. So this figure shows the spectra of various spectral classes of the stars. So as you can see over here, how certain lines changes with the spectral class. So students, this table summarizes the different stellar spectral types and their characteristics. So let us now first discuss the O spectral class, which is having approximate surface temperature greater than 25,000 Kelvin. And the hydrogen bomber lines are weak. The helium lines are of HE2 type. The other characteristic lines that is of highly ionized atoms that is SI4, N3 are present. Naked eye example is MISA, Lambda Orionis class O8 and the color is blue. Next one is B having temperature around 25,000 to 11,000 Kelvin. Medium hydrogen bomber lines. HE2 lines are absent in this, whereas HE1 are strong. Other characteristic lines belongs to SI3, comma O2. Naked eye example is Ashenar, Alpha Eridani, class B6. And the color is blue-white. Next one is a spectral class having the temperature range from 11,000 to 7,500 Kelvin. It has strong hydrogen bomber lines. HE1 is absent and the other characteristic lines are weak CA2, strong Mg2 and Si2. It is, the naked eye example is Sirius, 
Alpha Canis Majoris Class A1 and the color is white. The next one is F having the temperature range from 7500 to 6000 Kelvin. Medium hydrogen bomber lines are there. HE1 is again absent. The CA2 are strongest. FE1 and TI1 lines are also strong. The naked eye example is Canopus Alpha Carini Class A9 and the color is yellow white. The next class is G having temperature range from 6000 to 5000 Kelvin. Weak hydrogen bomber lines are there and the HE1 lines are absent. Other characteristic lines are CA2 which are very strong. Neutral metals like FE1 they are also strong. The naked eye example is the Sun class G2, Alpha Centauri A class G2 and the color is yellow. The next one is the K spectral class having 5000 to 3500 Kelvin. The hydrogen lines are very weak, HE1 are absent, neutral metal lines are strong molecular bands. The naked eye example is Architurus Alpha Butis class K0. Color is orange. The last class of spectral line is M having temperature range less than 3500 Kelvin having very weak hydrogen bomber lines. Again HE1 are absent. CA1 are very strong lines. Titanium oxide bands are stronger than in Kelvin. The naked eye example is Betiguis Alpha Orionis class M1 to M2 and the color is orange red. CCD tracings of stellar spectra. These days spectra is obtained as the tracings of charge coupled devices CCD output at the focus of telescopes. So this figure shows the tracings of stellar spectra of various classes where they record directly the intensity of lines as well as the background. And as you can see students over here here each dip in the tracing is an absorption line. So students, let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. Stellar spectra is an important tool for studying the stars. A hot dense object or a hot gas at higher pressure emits a continuous spectrum. Spectrum of a thin hot gas is an emission spectrum. Bright lines on a dark background. The lines are the characteristics of the gas. Spectrum of a cool thin gas placed between a hot dense object and the spectroscope is an absorption spectrum where the dark lines crossing the bright background. Now the absorption lines have exactly the same frequency as the emission lines. Stellar spectra are dark lines crossing a continuum background. Stellar spectra can be very simple containing only a few lines. Stellar spectra can be very complex containing thousands of lines and molecular bands. Even within this diversity, common characteristics can be found 
which forms the basis of classification. Classification scheme was developed at the Howard Observatory mainly through the efforts of Annie Cannon and the scheme is called as Harvard scheme. So assigning a spectral class to a star is very important because it gives all the information about the surface temperature and the characteristics of the star. So there are seven major classes O, B, A, E, uh, F basically G, K, M. Each major class is subdivided into 10 subclasses running from 0 to 9. So the color of the classes changes from the blue O type to the red M type. Stars belonging to the first three classes in the sequence are called as type star, early type stars basically and the stars belonging to the last four major types they are termed as late type stars. Thank you.